what trends have you observed regarding the adoption and acceptance of single-use liquid bags in CGMP processes? Are there particular challenges or opportunities associated with this shift? Yeah, so some of the trends that you might see in bioprocess now, one of the bigger ones is size. Um, so people are scaling up to larger batches. And one of the things that we've noticed is some of our larger sized bags, like our 100 liter, 200 liter bags, are very commonly used in areas where um, people are doing these large scale ups. Uh, so this isn't necessarily just going to be for bags, this is going to be for a lot of different process equipment which we can use for our liquid bags and for our bag assemblies, or as we would like to call them our FTAs, fluid transfer assemblies. So size is one, and then of course there are other different challenges regarding adoption and acceptance. Um, occasionally you might see issues with bottles. One of the things I really like to say is you can't knock over a bag. I've seen operators knock over open bottles under hoods and lose product. And you know, when it comes to the therapeutic itself, it's a very valuable fluid. Um, and, and with that being said, the containment measures need to be taken to ensure that you're not losing any of that product um, given its high value. So some of the other things that we've been doing that have been helping the adoption, we do um, various pressure tests on the bags. We do various hanging tests, weight tests, uh, leak and burst testing, uh, just to ensure that the bags are gonna be working in process as needed um, to ensure that end users aren't having challenges with tubing falling off bags, leaking bags, uh, poor seals where ports might be. Um, of course, other challenges that might be uh, seen in the industry are material choices, right? So material can play a big part in the overall process. And if people are having challenges with chemical compatibility, they might want to use polyethylene bag instead of something that's more of a legacy product like a, a ethyl vinyl acetate or EVA material. How crucial is customization in meeting the diverse needs of users in the biotherapeutics and cell and gene therapy fields? So that's, that's going to be extremely important, right? So um, while a lot of a lot of practice can be done with standard items, when you're actually getting into your commercialized process, you look at things like your footprint and your layout in your lab or your clean rooms where you're doing the manufacturing, right? So having the customization aspect is huge because whether it's uh, tubing lengths coming off the bag, um, different connectors to be used to maintain a sterile closed process, um, or even, uh, even certain things like bag shape can be customized to maximize product recovery um, as you're kind of moving through that bioprocess. Because again, as I mentioned previously, you want to make sure that when you're doing your customization of your bag, that you're optimizing your process for maximum yield, for maximum product recovery, and essentially just making sure that those cells stay safe and happy. Um, that being said, the customization option uh, is something that we really look to do here at ILC Dover. And it's something that uh, we believe is incredibly important in the industry not just to provide a, a potential partner with something off the shelf that might work. We prefer to move forward with full customization to ensure that the end user is going to be getting exactly what they need for their process so that that can be optimized and streamlined um, for really the best possible outcomes. How do industry standards such as USP impact the design and manufacturing of liquid banks? And how does this contribute to overall compliance in CGMP? So when it comes to the quality of the bags and the regulatory nature, um, and the regulatory requirements needed uh, in the industry, this all goes into um, this all goes into the thought when it comes to designing the films and the product contact parts of the bag, right? So when you're utilizing, uh, for us, we use the Renla 9101. It's a polyethylene film. One of the reasons why we wanted to use that film and so many others in the marketplace use that film is because it has a great um, test profile for these different regulations, whether it's USP, FDA, um, ISO. There's there's many that go um, really into the development of these materials because they are product contact materials. 
These regulations, as well as um, other tests like BPOG, uh, USP665 extractables, are very important to ensure that when you're using these materials, especially in single use, we use a lot of plastics and silicones and things along those lines. We have these tests in place to ensure that the materials are biocompatible with, uh, with human cell lines or animal cell lines, of course. Um, and we wanna make sure that there's not gonna be any product leaching or being extracted into the uh, therapeutic product because that can affect the overall um, real viability of the therapeutic itself in certain cases if there's issues with uh, material compatibility. So these types of things are, are extremely important when you think of um, when you when you think of the need in bioprocess to ensure that you do have pure materials that are inert when it comes to interacting with these types of cells and different types of buffers, medias, etc. What are the common challenges that pharmaceutical professionals face when selecting and using liquid banks? And how does ILC Dover address them? So one of the main common challenges is just ensuring that you're going to have a custom product to fit your file process, right? So that's one thing that we'll always work with customers on and potential partners on is to ensure that the challenges that they might be facing when it comes to tubing length or connector type on standard bags are taken care of through our customization process. So our ability to customize really helps when it comes to facing some of those common challenges. Also for different applications, um, we have a great team here that can uh, help end users streamline their process throughout various different applications, whether it be a tangential flow filtration, whether it be some type of general pump transfer application. We have a great team here that can help the end user spec in the parts necessary to really uh, optimize the, the process there with whatever stage of, of, of the bioprocess that they're kind of working through at that time. Now, of course, some of the other challenges you might have, material compatibility concerns, if you're running with um, different acids or bases, uh, buffers, medias, occasionally you might run into chemical compatibility issues. That's one of the reasons why it's incredibly important to know um, your material, know what it's interacting with, and know what you would be running through the tubing in the bag um, to ensure that we at ILC Dover can select the proper material for that application. Now, whether that be a polyethylene or other, um, that's something that we always ensure that we're looking to do if we can have all of the information to make those uh, suggestions. And lastly, regulatory compliance. So not all bags are created equal from the from the standpoint of your regulatory compliances. It's extremely important when customers looking for a bag that it has all of the regulatory certifications that are that are needed in that specific area, right? So um, in most cases, you're going to make sure you need animal free. You need uh, you, you need to have generally USP class six. Um, most of those are going to be fairly standard in the industry, but in some cases they might not be on certain materials. And in the case that that's a need, um, that needs to be addressed really at the, at the beginning. Uh, but one of the things that we've kind of done to ensure that that doesn't happen is, is we proactively did all a lot of these tests, these regulatory certifications prior to launching uh, our 2D liquid bags. How important is speed and flexibility in the supply chain for companies engaged in biotherapeutics and cell and gene therapy? So speed and flexibility is one of the most important things, if not the most important thing, when it comes to uh, selecting a supplier at times. Of course, quality, regulatory, very important. But ultimately, when it comes down to it, speed and flexibility are going to be key to ensure that you have a consistent manufacturing process and you're not having any shutdowns. Um, flexibility as well is one that's in incredibly um, important to customers and users because when you do have the flexibility, whether it's to um, make an order quickly or to change parts on the fly because uh, the design has changed or something along those lines, having that speed to react and having the flexibility to accomplish the end user need is, is going to be um, pretty critical when it comes to uh, really the overall design and, and um, consistency in your bio process. Can you elaborate on the specific advantages of single use liquid bags at various stages of bioprocessing? 
So, of course, we all know that there are different stages of bioprocessing. You have generally your upstream and your downstream, and that can be broken into um, different things like medium buffer preparation, cell culture, harvest and purification, etc. So, one of the great things about the bags uh, that we have is you have the flexibility to do scale up. So, when you're starting uh, with very small volumes upstream, and you might be doing your cell line development, inoculation, things along those lines. We have a bag that's 50 milliliters that you can start very small. Um, there are other manufacturers even that have bags smaller than that for things like sampling, um, for things like initial cell line development and inoculation. And then, of course, as you move through upstream and you develop and you have higher volumes as you're getting into the purification more so downstream phase, you have the ability to move from that 50 milliliter bag or 100 milliliter bag all the way up to the 200 liter uh, for any type of bulk therapeutic substance, right? So um, the scale up with the bags is is very simple um, in comparison to things like bottles, especially with bottles. When you're looking at different areas of the process, of course, you can scale up. But once you get into those larger liquid volumes, you might have issues moving the product from area to area if you're upstream and downstream or in separate manufacturing suites, um, generally because bottles are going to be a little bit more difficult to move uh, with regard to just the, the kind of the way that they're shaped and the way that they fit on totes or rollers. The bags generally offer that flexibility to sit in uh, totes and they can be frozen a little bit easier. They store better um, than bottles, mainly because you can stack them kind of one on top of another where bottles sit flat and next to each other. The bags, you can kind of get a little bit more flexibility from uh, a storage perspective too. Now, another thing with the single use bags in comparison to maybe other uh, glass bioreactors or stainless steel, if you want to use a single use bioreactor, um, great things there are change over time. It's much easier to change over with single use liquid bags than it is to use glass vessels or stainless steel vessels. So that being said, also, you don't have to do any type of sterilization for these single use items because in most cases they're being pre-sterilized by your manufacturer um, via gamma irradiation or x-ray uh, and sometimes ETO sterilization. Um, but these are these are going to be some of your major factors when it comes to the advantages of the bags. Um, one final one that just kind of popped into my head is going to be your reduced risk of contamination. I had mentioned cleaning um, of your glass bioreactors or stainless steel tanks. Uh, the amount of energy that goes into cleaning is very high, especially when you look into things like the water for injection that needs to then be turned into a steam to clean some of these stainless steel piping vessels um, or tanks. Now, with the single use items, you're going to be using one per batch. And that's one of the great things about single use liquid bags. You really can use them and you have the flexibility to use it once per batch and then kind of get rid of it and not have to worry about um, autoclaving or worry about uh, generating your water for injection to do steam in place or clean in place. So that's those are some of the advantages that might not be specific to um, one area of bioprocess, but kind of cross over into a lot of the different branches um, in the chain from from upstream to your final fill and finish. How do manufacturers ensure the integrity and safety of liquid bags? So the way that we ensure integrity and our safety of our liquid bags, um, when we're doing manufacturing of the bags, of course, we inspect all the bags over a light box to ensure that there's no particulates visible. Um, and that being said, that helps us ensure that there's no, as I like to call them, little nasties in your therapeutic product, right? So quality assurance specifically is one to ensure the integrity and safety of the bags. Another thing that we've done is we do a various uh, array of tests, whether those are hang tests to ensure that the bags can carry the weight of the full fill and volume of the liquid that's being stored in them. Um, whether it be burst testing, uh, pressure testing, pressure decay. There are a lot of different things that we do to ensure that the seals on the bags and the seals on the ports are um, going to stand up to the various uh, areas in bioprocess where you might see uh, different kind of factors um, coming to light with, with those bags.
Where do you see the future of liquid bags for fluid storage and transfer in CGMP heading? Are there emerging trends or technologies to watch? So again, one of the biggest emerging trends that I've seen is going to be your, your larger scale manufacturing, right? So there are some great companies out there that are coming out with single use bioreactor bags anywhere up from 2,000 to 6,000 liters. So that's quite a large, uh, a, lo a large batch size, right? But whereas previously you might have seen those done in large stainless tanks, now more and more companies are coming out with the option to do the single use biomanufacturing bags um, for those larger volumes. Also with the advent of certain cell therapies, we're also seeing smaller volumes uh, as well, right? So you might see small 10 milliliter sampling bags that can be used in um, autologous cell and gene therapies that are very highly individualized where you will have very small batches uh, in, as opposed to, um, I can't remember specifically, I believe it's analogous, which comes from separate donors that can then be used for all. The autologous is used very small batch because it takes the cells of one patient, um, genetically modifies those cells to then become the therapeutic itself and uh, help attack whatever uh, ailment that patient might have.